what's up guys, this is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Awakening Super Saiyan Goku, which is one of my most anticipated figures in a very, very long time, and I have to say, so far it hasn't really disappointed. We're going to go over the figure in detail though, so you know what to expect from it if you're trying to decide whether or not you want to make the purchase. Uh, so let's look at the packaging first. For those of you that collect the packaging, this is important. This is a new package design. It's completely different than it used to be. So uh, it looks really good. It's not going to match the other figures, but it is a very nice kind of updated look for the SH Figure Arts packaging. I like it personally. I'm really pleased with it. I wouldn't mind if they went with the all white with the spots of color for every character. I think that would be a nice look. So very cool new packaging if you're one of those packaging people. As far as the figure goes, he stands roughly... Uh, just shy of 18 centimeters, which makes him just shy of 7 inches to the top of his hair. And if you want to do a height comparison real quick, you can see they're almost the same. He's just the tiniest bit taller from what I can see right here. I'll do a photo at the end so you can see up close, though. Uh, as far as accessories go, he has a few. You can see right here we have the standard-looking face. We have two other faces. So we have that one, and we have that one which looks really good. That's probably going to be the one I use the most. And then we have the yelling one. And while the yelling one and the standard one are similar to the original Super Saiyan Goku, they are new sculpts, which look really, really nice. Paintwork on all three of these faces is top-notch. I do feel like the eyes are slightly too high on the face. We had that issue with uh, Vegito also and Gohan, and I think it's kind of here on Goku, but it's not nearly as bad, so it's not a big deal at all. As far as interchangeable hands, we have the two fist hands that you can see right here. And then we have one of these for either side. Let's get in a little bit closer for you. So we have the Kamehameha hand for either side. We have this grappling style charger Kamehameha blast hand for either side. Another grappling type of hand with slightly less dynamic posing. And then we have our style pose hand, whatever you want to call that. We have one of those for each side, so we have a total of five hands for either side, which gives you a grand total of ten hands. We have no, unfortunately, we have no uh, effect parts. You're going to have to use ones from other sets for this guy. As far as the paint goes on this guy, like I said, the face is really nice. The skin tones are molded in a nice, really nice color plastic, and then there's some really good shading on there. So, as far as that goes, it's great. The hair Maybe a little heavy-handed with the shading, I think. It's not as bad as like the uh, SDCC Super Saiyan Goku, but it doesn't look that great to me. Uh, I think it could look a little bit better, but once he's posed, it's not too bad. The uh, plastic and paintwork on the clothing does leave a little bit to be desired. It's a little bit dull, and there's really no paintwork to be had, except for this one dark spot I have on this lower part of the leg, which I'm not sure why it's that dark, but it's there. Otherwise he looks really good, just slightly muted colors for the clothing. In terms of sculpt, we have some reused parts like in the arms and maybe even the neck and the boots and things like that, but for the most part it's all new sculpt work, which you can tell really quickly by seeing that it doesn't look anything like this figure, which is a really good thing. Brand new shoulder, which looks really good. Brand new chest, obviously. Sculpted nicely, it matches the Broly design pretty well in terms of style. Uh, the tattered clothing is just sculpted phenomenally all the way around. Pants, shirt, everything looks really, really good. The anatomy, again, on the shoulders and chest and the legs that show looks very... It's, it's a nice way to realize the 2D drawing in a 3D format, so I, I like it a lot. I'm very pleased with it. As far as the articulation goes, the head is on the standard ball hinge, ball peg combination. So there's a peg that goes into the head and then a ball hinge under that that lets the head move up and down. You can rotate it around and pretty much get him to look however you want him to. Uh, the neck is on a ball peg, I believe. I didn't pull it out to check, but it doesn't have that much range of motion. We can pull the head out to see just how much it'll move, which it's almost not moving at all. Which is fine, I mean, you don't need the neck to move, it's just really enough to give him some character. You can turn him to the side just a little bit, and that'll help your style posing. So that's pretty cool. We have a butterfly joint in the shoulder, which isn't incredibly effective. It does bring the arm out a little bit, but not enough to really make that much of a difference, so it's kind of 
kind of unimportant, but it doesn't look bad and it's not like a problem, so that's all right. The shoulder connects to that on a ball peg, which does give it a little extra play. You can see that there. Then we have the ball hinge itself for the shoulder, which gives him really nice range of motion and it looks good, so that's a good thing in my book. Bring the arm all the way around if you want to. See, the butterfly joint just doesn't bring it that far out that it's gonna make that much of a difference. We have our bicep swivel right here, double jointed elbow, which gives us really good range of motion, and it looks pretty good too, so that's a nice thing. And then the wrist has our standard ball hinge, ball peg combo, just like the neck, so you'll be able to move the hands around as you need them to. The torso is all new, obviously, so we have this joint that kind of separates if you want it to, and it's supposed to give him better range of motion, and it does. You can bring it down a little bit for more forward. If you want to hunch him over, that's fine. You can bring him back a little bit, lean, lean him side to side. You can rotate it. Uh, he does have pretty good range without pulling it out, though. You can bring him pretty far to the side on either side, and pretty far forward. It's a little stiff, but it works. So I don't even think I'm going to need to use that extending bit, so that's pretty cool. The uh, lower torso is just a single peg in the waist, so you can bring him, you can rotate him around, you can lean him forward, lean him back, side to side. Doesn't have the greatest range, but combined with that other joint, it should be enough to get him in any poses that you need him to be in. That's fine by me. The uh, belt here is actually a separate piece. It hides all the gaps for the torso and for the hips, so that's okay. It looks pretty good. A completely new hip design. So we used to have that hinged ball peg, now we have basically just a swivel right here which brings it like all the way forward all the way back pretty much uninhibited that's not the right word you get what I'm saying though it goes all the way around no problem there and then if you want to move the hips out to the side we have a hinge for the hip which I personally don't mind you can still as you can see get the hip all the way out you're really only limited by the plastic literally being in the way from the rest of the body so it's just as effective I personally like the design better it looks better and it functions just fine so it's all good in my book we have our thigh swivel not up here like we used to which was pretty much ineffective we have it down here where the skin part and even some of the clothing goes into the other clothing so it hides the joint perfectly and you can still rotate the leg however you want to we have our double jointed knee which has really good range of motion and not too bad of a look at all it's not perfect the way the kneecap is shaped it's a little odd uh, but still pretty darn effective and I'm really pleased with the range of motion so that's a good thing and then lastly we have the ankle and foot and toe joint which is exactly the same as before still really ineffective poor range of motion on that double ball peg and the toe hinge is still just fine so nothing really to talk about there so all in all we have mostly a brand new figure with really good decent not really good decent really good articulation with pretty decent range of motion in all of the parts Nice paint work, nice sculpt work. Could be a little bit more colorful, but it's not too bad at all. I definitely recommend this figure 100% if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. It's just really fun to have. It's up there with Broly, easily one of the best SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z figures. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. I recommend it 100%. Uh, check out Big Bad Toy Store. There's a link in the description below. This guy should be coming in stock fairly soon, so do that. And they also have the... Uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Gold Frieza. So if you want to get those, grab those also. Uh, and that'll do it. Stick around for the photos here at the end. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.